Now round one against FPL Nemesis did go in my favour but only by two points and he has got the advantage this game week of having Haaland which does frighten me a little bit. Thank you to everyone that recommended to go with my Salah draft, I think it was definitely more balanced. But this is how I'm lining up for the upcoming game week and the lack of City attack is really really concerning me. Somehow I need to manage to shoehorn in a City player. I am nervous about this upcoming game week but I have planned ahead. I left two million in the bank so that I'll be able to upgrade a midfielder and bring in a City attacker. Ipswich is just such a good fixture to target. We saw last game week Liverpool had six big chances against them and it's City's first home fixture of the season so I think they're going to go absolutely wild. Ideally we won't see too much from Haaland but that feels very unlikely and he seems very very strong this season as well. He's had a summer to relax and he is going to be wanting to make an impact shall we say but I have narrowed down my City attackers to three options. We've got Bernardo Silva, Phil Foden and Kevin De Bruyne. To help me make my decision I will be using the members area on Fantasy Football Scout and there are so many useful tools on there. You can compare players, compare teams, make your own tables. I'm having a wild time but if you would like to sign up as well there is a link in my description below. To start off I'm going to be looking at the stats for this season and obviously we're very very limited because we have one game week but we can see Bernardo Silva is leading the way thanks to his assists. Bernardo Silva and De Bruyne both got full 90 minutes. They started the game, stayed on for the entire time. Foden, on the other hand, did not start, but he did get 45 minutes, which was quite a good indication that Pep is hoping to bring him back. I didn't think Foden was going to appear at all in game week one, and then I thought he may be have his minutes managed a bit more in game week two before a full return in game week three. Now I'm getting very optimistic that he may start in game week two. Again, he may have his minutes managed, but even if I can get 60 minutes of Foden against Ipswich, I think there is a good chance that he could get a haul in that time. So maybe that's making me lean towards him. Obviously, out of the three, Bernardo Silva is the cheapest at 6.5. And with that extra 3 million, I can easily upgrade someone in my forward position. I've been eyeing up Havertz, so I could maybe do Chris Wood to Havertz which long term is quite good, but I'm not fully confident that Bernardo Silva is going to get regular starts. If we look at the stats from last season, he only got 29 starts compared to Foden's 33. And I was scorned by Bernardo Silva last season. I had him as a differential and he kept getting benched and not getting any returns. But saying that, he has had six assists in the past seven starts. So we may be seeing a different side to him. But even so, looking at last season's data, I think I'm probably leaning more towards Foden. De Bruyne has the highest assist threat, whereas Foden has got the highest goal threat, and he averaged 6.7 points per start. Considering De Bruyne only got 15 starts, averaging 5.5 points is good, but I am worried about whether or not he's going to get those minutes. Foden, I just think, is a much more nailed option, and we're going for that goal threat. So I think I'm going to be going for Foden, but do let me know in the comments if you think I should go for a different asset. And now we will have to discuss who is going to be coming out of my team to make way for my City attacker. This team got me 77 points, which takes me to an overall rank of 522,000. Obviously, overall rank doesn't mean too much now, but it's nice to know I'm on the right lines. So in goal, we have got Raya. I got eight points with him. They kept a clean sheet and he also got one bonus point and one save point. I'm really happy that I took that cheap route into Arsenal's defence. I think on the wild card, I may go for a defender and then two attacking options, but... There is a while until that happens. Then we've got Trent. Liverpool kept a clean sheet and Trent picked up two bonus points. Mikalenko was, of course, quite disappointing, but I still think he's got some attacking returns in him and Everton defensively should improve, should strengthen up a bit, we say optimistically. Then Porro, a nine-pointer thanks to his goal. He also created four chances. I know he's flagged at the moment, but he was spotted in training, so he should be fine to go for game week two. Gordon, unfortunately, will be the one making way for my City attacker. With an extra 2 million, I can go for De Bruyne or a Foden, which I much prefer. And I've already got that coverage with Isak, as I touched on earlier. So unfortunately, we did not have a good start to Gordon, and it's a sad time to see him going out of the team, but he will be leaving. And then we've got my Chelsea asset subbed off at 58 minutes, which I don't think anyone saw coming. I've seen a lot of people panic about him, but I think he's fine to just monitor, give him some time. Chelsea's fixtures really improved from game week two onwards. So I think there is still some goals in him, but if not, he'll be out of the team. Saka does what Saka does best. We got one goal and one assist matching Havertz. He created five chances as well, coming away with 12 points. I didn't even consider captaining him for the game week, but now he is definitely on my captaincy radar. And then Salah, unfortunately, he was only my vice captain, came away with 14 points thanks to one goal, one assist, and obviously he got into the bonus. 
And then my front three, we have to talk about Chris Wood, my absolute hero, coming away with one goal and three bonus points. I love him. I wish he could stay on my team for the whole season. Solanke made his debut and did have a couple of chances. He also wasn't spotted in yesterday's training photos, which makes me a little bit concerned about his start, but I think he'll be okay. Only two points. It's going to be disappointing for him. It's disappointing for us as managers, but we move forward. <laughs> he will probably get a hat trick. That's what I'm going to speak into existence. And then Isak, he was my captain. The red card debacle with Newcastle just threw them off completely. It's not the start to the season that they would have wanted. I only got 10 points from him. I really thought we were going to be more in 20 point territory with him, but these things happen. It's classic FPL. Didn't overthink it whatsoever. And then there's not much to say about the bench. I like the look of Sangari. Bangako is unfortunately off. He is not the nailed asset we suspected he would be. Although maybe not starting, but I think we all expected him to stay at Brighton. And then Robinson looked really good. He's definitely got some potential there. So I'm happy with my bench as it stands. So onto my team selection for this game week. I will be benching Michalenko against Spurs. And instead, I'm going to be bringing Robinson. I'm so excited to see Robinson. Leicester at home. I think this is where Fulham are going to skyrocket. I may be wanting to bring in Muniz or Smith Rowe after this. But patience is key. There is always the route to do Wood to Muniz. Although if Muniz rises in price, I might have to be quick on that one. So then the defence is going to remain the same. Poro was spotted in training on Monday, so his early substitution, there should be no issues there. He should be starting. And then the midfield, we are going to be saying goodbye to Gordon, 7.5 million. Looking at his upcoming fixtures and expected points, I do feel a bit of a gut feeling that I shouldn't be taking him out. But in comparison to um, Foden, I just feel like it's a no-brainer. So I'm going to be bringing in Foden. And then if we look at his upcoming fixtures, look at that. I basically a sea of green. We have got Arsenal, we have got Newcastle, but it's Man City. They're going to be able to do big things in those fixtures. And hopefully Phil Foden will be central to all of it. Next three game weeks especially, Ipswich 6.5 points predicted. West Ham 5 and then Brentford 5.8. I think he's a really good pick to go for. There is part of me that's tempted to captain him. If everyone's going for Haaland, should I just captain Foden? But the lack of knowledge on whether or not he's going to start is the one thing that puts me off. So instead of captaining Isak this week, I will be captaining Mo Salah. I just think that Brentford home fixture is a really, really nice one. And I regret not captaining Salah last game week. We saw where that I ended up with that one. Saka is also one that I could be tempted to captain, but similar to Isak, they both got away fixtures and I much prefer captaining a player when they've got a home fixture. I'm giving Nkunku another week to try and impress me. Now, when we look at Chelsea's fixtures, you cannot get much better than this. We've got Wolves, Palace, Bournemouth, West Ham, Brighton and then Forest. I don't see the point of taking him out of your team this early on, obviously against City in the first opening game week. Chelsea were never going to thrive in that fixture, but there are many opportunities for them here to thrive. So we're going to be staying positive. He is the better alternative, better alternative. He's the cheaper alternative to Cole Palmer. If I could have any Chelsea asset, it would be Cole Palmer. But I think at 6.5 million, this is a really nice route to get into that Chelsea attack. And then ideally, as a Chelsea fan, it would be lovely if I could have triple Chelsea because I'm so confident in the team. But Let's wait and see. And then we've got the front three. We've got Isak as my vice captain. I may change that to Saka just in case anything wild happens to Salah between now and the deadline. And then we have got Chris Wood, probably, or maybe his final time in my team. Maybe penultimate, I'm not sure. We've got Southampton away, then go on for Wolves. Now, if I had a Forest attacker for the Wolves game, my preference would be Morgan Gibbs-White. We saw him score against his former team last season. I can imagine he's got a point to prove again this season and will be going full force. And I'm pretty certain we're going to see Awanai coming in and taking away more minutes from Wood um, here on. They've also got some exciting signings to come, so I don't know how nailed Wood is. Even though he, uh, this is like basically the Chris Wood fan club, I just think he's great. But yeah, unfortunately, I think his days are numbered. So Southampton will probably be the last fixture of him in my team, and then I'll be taking him out. And then the bench is very much remaining the same. We've got Sangari there if I do want that Forest coverage. He did impress me. So it would be nice to see him maybe getting some attacking returns in the next couple of game weeks before our wildcard. He may even stay in after the wildcard. And then Mikolenko, I'm not feeling that fussed about benching. I'm sure Spurs will score. And then Barco, less said about him the better. As long as that 4 million price tag is locked in, I'll be fine. But yeah, that's how the team is looking this week. Do let me know in the comments what you think of it, if I should make any changes, and if you agree with my Foden transfer. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.